about time I film a how to make a rose demonstration because I get asked more times on how to make a rose more than any other project and I could not tell you why. Uh, it's just a silly little flower, but apparently they're real popular. Um, this is one I made for my mom, but when they're done, they can look pretty real and a lot of kids like to make these for projects. <sighs> but I guess maybe I had to shed some light on why I think this is, or why I get so triggered. Hey, welcome to welding. Uh, this is a class you're really gonna enjoy. We teach you how to weld. You can make a lot of really good money welding. It's a great career choice. There's a high demand for welding. Not only that, we do some pretty cool projects in here. Anything from mini bikes to sled pullers to go-karts to big trailers, you name it. A lot of really, really neat projects. Um, yeah. Um, so I heard that uh, we, uh, is it true like um, that we could make roses? Like me metal ones? Is that, can we make a rose? Yeah, we can, we, I, yes, we can make some roses. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. That's one of the smaller, like for Valentine's Day or something. But yeah, no, we can build anything you guys want. Um, yeah. Do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, I, I heard that, um, like, if, if I made a rose, I could like, could I, could I sell the rose? Like, I heard that from like, a friend. Can, is that true? Can I, can I sell it? So yeah, um, like I was saying, you need to make sure you add bridges into this image if you want to like have something cut out of the center but have it kind of free floating. Um, does that make sense? Anybody got any questions? Uh, Jacob? Uh, yeah, so is this how you make a rose? <laughs> no, this isn't. We're not talking about roses right now. Now remember class, this is the pick point, the main, this is like the point of reference. This is where all of your measurements come from. Uh, that's the same with most every other build, like a drift trike or even a sled puller or this drag trike or mini bike. It's all coming from this point. So make sure in your blueprints, your initial one, that you've got that drawn out on your, on your blueprint. Are there any questions on this? Uh, yeah, Jacob? What? Oh, yeah. Um, so... Do, uh, you said uh, blueprint, um, is that, so, is that where I would start if I wanted to make a rose? Was it like a blueprint? Oh, what? No, we're, we're talking about our CAD design for our tube chassis, um, not a rose. All right. Now on to our 7018 electrodes. Unlike our 6010 series stuff where it's a flash freeze rod and the flux coating is a bit thinner, this is a low hydrogen electrode and this has got a thicker flux compound. That's why when you're handling these, I'd like you to be a little bit more careful. Uh, the flux can chip away. Eventually then it's just a bare electrode, just a solid rod. Um, Jacob, do you, is this a real, is this a real question, Jacob? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a real question. Um, so you said when the flux compound is, like if you were to bend it or something, it would chip away, right? So, uh, when, so when it's chipped away, and it's just a bare rod. Could you, um, could you make the uh, like the stem for a rose out of that?
Yeah, that's why I get triggered. All right. Uh, this video will teach you how to make everything start to finish besides maybe paint, but you can figure that out. All right, for the rows, we need to cut some four inch strips and then after we cut the four inch strips, we're gonna cut them into four inch squares. This is our foot stomp shear. It has an adjustable bar so you can set up repeatable cuts on this. Really easy to, to operate uh, whatever length we're cutting this at. It's got measurements on both of these bars for adjustment and we've just set it to four inches so we can get this four inch strip. Now it's called a foot stomp shear for a reason. It's operated with your foot. We're gonna slide this in until it stops on the auto stop back here. And we're gonna make sure that our sheet is all the way flat against this fence so that we make nice straight cuts. Once it's set up all the way against the, the guard, the bar, we're gonna put our foot up here and make the cut. After you've gotten your four inch strip, the next step is to just cut it into four inch squares. We've already got it set up to four inches on the auto stop. So we're just gonna run this in, hit the stop and just make a bunch of cuts. Now we only need five of these squares. Uh, after you pick them up, we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that we've got these four inch squares cut out, the next step is to cut them into circles. We're gonna use some aviation snips or tin snips. Um, the ones we have, they are left cutting. They cut in the left direction or straight. If you try to cut to the right with these, it's really difficult and you'll end up screwing your cut up and it's not gonna be as clean looking. Um, you can tell that they are left cutting with a L on these. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But it's just like scissors on steroids. Um, this is like 22 or 26 gauge sheet metal. The easiest way to go through and cut this is to keep your sheet metal moving. Now notice I've got a glove on this hand because this is really thin and really sharp. So I like to have a glove on the hand I'm handling the sheet metal with. The hand I'm operating my tool with, I don't really need a glove. Now like I said, when you're cutting this, you want this to always be moving. So as I'm cutting, I am rotating this sheet. I've got big old meat hooks and I've got good strength in my hands, but a lot of you guys are gonna be itty bitty baby hands and it can be kind of difficult. So you wanna use every advantage you can to make this easier on you. So as you cut this, you're going to slightly rotate that with your left hand. And you're gonna cut right to the edge on every flat spot. Do, a lot of kids waste a lot of time taking a Sharpie and trying to draw perfect circles, but that honestly is a waste of your time. In nature, there are no such thing as perfect circles. And when we're making roses, the imperfections, the little squiggles and stuff, end up making it look that much more realistic in the long run. So don't overstress on making perfect circles. After you cut your first, just repeat that all the way through. I've even got some flat spots here. I'm not too worried about it. If you are, you can just take and nick off the corners. That way you can take care of any obvious straight edges and then it'll fool the eye when it's all put together. All right, now we've got all five of these discs cut out. The next step is to center punch and then drill. All right, now we're going to center punch each one of these. You can take the time to measure it out and get perfect center if you wanna waste that time. But again, nothing in nature's perfect, so we're gonna eyeball it. You're gonna take your center punch and a hammer, and this is just to give us a spot for our drill bit to bite into so that it doesn't walk around while we're trying to drill it. This is not a punch to punch through this material. It's just to put a little dimple in it. Now, 
I'm doing this on a wooden block. That is so that these points stay pointy. Uh, if you go to center punch this on a steel surface, you're just gonna end up screwing up my punch and making me pissed off. So on a wooden block, we're just gonna eyeball it and give it a little tap. There you go. Now, so on and so forth. Eyeball it. Do not waste your time. This project should be no longer than an hour, maybe. I can usually bust them out a lot quicker, but I've made, I don't even want to know how many roses I've made. Done. Punching's done. Next, we're gonna drill each one of these, and I'll show you that here next. All right, next step is to drill these, and we are going to clamp these in the vise before we drill them. This is sheet metal, and it will get caught in this drill bit, uh, and the scary thing is these edges are now a little bit serrated, and I've seen kids go to drill this in their hand, and I've seen kids get drilled through and have it get caught in the drill bit and then it turns this into a nightmare-like pizza cutter and it will gash your hands down to the bone if you're not quick or careful. So we're always going to clamp it in the vise before we drill this on this thin stuff. Now when I do clamp this in the vise, I'm going to clamp it down as close to the vise as I can. If I clamp it up like this, this is sheet metal, it's going to bend on you. So I like to clamp it down close to the vise jaws to prevent it from bending too much. And then I will hold right here, but I've made sure that I'm plenty tight on the vise. Now I'm gonna push, use good adequate pressure, just put it against my belly or just make sure I push good. Just like that. I've seen kids spend an entire class period drilling these for who knows what reason. Okay, you've gotta let the drill do the work, but you've gotta give it enough pressure so that it can actually cut and bite through that sheet metal. Also helps if you got a sharp drill bit. Be careful when it breaks through that you're not just gonna keep on pushing. Uh, that could end up bending the drill bit. Just gotta be careful. Make sure nothing's on the back side of that when that drill bit's gonna break through. There you go, all of them drilled in like five seconds. All right, we've cut them into circles. We've drilled a hole in each one of them. Now we've got to cut the petals. We need one of these to have four petals and the rest of them need to have at least five petals. The easiest way to divide them up is I usually just take the smallest one and I if this is the smallest one, I'll just cut it into fours. On every one after that, I want to cut them into fifths. And just think of Patrick Starr. He's got a body, two legs, and two arms. And there you go, there's five divided pieces. You could take the time and draw on each one of these with a Sharpie, but we, I don't like wasting time on that. So. Again, these tin snips cut to the left, so they'll cut straight or to the left. I'm going to cut down no closer than, let's say, an eighth inch or quarter inch from that hole. If you go too far, you're going to end up cutting into the hole and then you have to start over and get a new uh, layer. If you don't cut close enough, then when we go to shape this and we bend it around the bolt that we're going to put in this hole, this sheet metal doesn't want to form or bend and it ends up looking more like sheet metal than it would like an actual real flower petal. So just be careful, the last little bit, just creep your way up in there. All right, get it close to there, that bolt hole as possible. Now. We're just gonna work smarter, not harder. I'm going to work on this bottom right-hand side of this pedal and move on to the next one, next one. You'll see what I mean here in a second because these only cut to the left. So I'll hold this layer like this and I will 
keep the sheet metal moving while I'm squeezing this and I can make nice round pretty cuts and they don't have to all match remember nature has no duplicates don't get overly stressed about having perfect little petals okay now I've gotten the right side done now I just turn it over and do the other side The nice thing with this project is it takes minimal tools and you can get and you can do this at home. I've got a lot of students who will make these and sell them for $20, $30 a piece. All right, that's the one layer. Now on to the one with five. Same thing, we're gonna cut down, get close to that bolt hole, but not too far away. And then I'm just gonna turn it so that Patrick's body is straight up and then I'm going to cut the first leg and then his second leg and then his arms there we go then repeat the other process of cutting the petals now if you when you're cutting your petals Look for any corners like this. I don't know if it'll show up on the video, but this has got a small little corner that doesn't look natural. So we'll round that that off. But if everything else is nice and round, then we're good. And you just repeat that three other times and then you're golden. All right, I'm on my last layer. It's the biggest petal of them all and I've divided it, but this guy's looking kind of large so this layer will actually have six petals in it which is totally fine but i would rather have an odd number of these so that we can stagger them when we layer these up and you'll get what i mean here in a second but throughout you guys is cutting these petals part of the reason i get so triggered when it comes to making flowers is these little shavings these little things get left out and or are all over the floor and I everybody will stand on them step on them and then you take it home and these little things get caught in the carpet and then next time you're waking up in the middle of the night to go get a drink of water you drag your foot along one of these sharp little day ruiners and it really pisses you off so please just clean them up after you're finished cutting them out all right next we've got to prepare this block uh, i should have a bunch of these laying around but after so long i get kind of upset and throw them on the garbage but i've drawn a little bit of a petal shape here and i'm going to take a grinder with a stone disc on it and just grind in a little dish here so that we can use it to shape our petals this is what gives our, our metal a belly to it, so to speak, so that it looks more like a rose petal versus sheet metal. I've just drawn a little bit of a line just for reference and I'm just gonna, just gonna grind away at this. It's gonna take a minute with this, but it's all I got. There we go. Next, we're gonna hit it with the hammer and I'll show you that next step. All right. Just for context, here is a rose that's in the middle of being formed and shaped. Um, you can see it's, I mean, even as sheet metal, it still has this galvanized coating on it. It looks pretty real. Now, the next step we're doing is going to help form all of this around the bolt that we're going to be using. Uh, if you were to leave it just flat, like I've left some of these flat, you can still form it. But when we add these bellies to it, it, it does help shape them a little bit. Also, these little striations, these marks that we're putting in them, just like a rose petal, if you've ever looked at a rose petal, they have those little lines in them. And when we, if you choose to paint your rose, these little lines on each one of these little petals, it really ends up looking pretty realistic. Now, we're using a straight or cross peen hammer. I've got this nice and cleaned up. If it's got any dings or dents in it, that's gonna be shown up in your sheet metal. 
So make sure that this edge is nice and clean when you go to put these marks in. Now, when you are doing this, make sure you are hitting this thing as flat as you can. If you hit it on, an, on a corner, you're gonna put big dings and dents in it that do not look like anything on a rose. So, nice little taps. And you'll notice I am rotating, I'm rotating the sheet metal and I'm pivoting all off that center hole so that these marks are all going out from the center. It doesn't take a whole lot to get the belly in there that you're looking for. Now on to the next one. Notice I'm choked up on the hammer and I'm just, I'm letting this hammerhead do the work for me. I'm not going to town on this thing. You'll wear, wear your arm out and your roses will look like Helen Keller made them. Not sure how well the sound is coming into the video, but just another reason Mr. Money gets triggered when it comes to roses is imagine 32 kids every single hour of the day going to town on this smacking metal. It's really annoying and that's a nice way to put it. Okay, we'll just repeat this for all these other layers. And then the next step is bolting it together and I'll show you that here in a sec. Now that we've got all five layers done and textured and, and shaped, we're going to bolt it together. You're gonna need to find a quarter inch bolt and quarter inch nut because we drilled it quarter inch. So we're gonna start with the layer that's got just four petals and we're gonna put the bolt through the top side and then just by size, we're gonna go smallest to biggest. And don't worry too much about getting them staggered up just yet. Just get them together. <clears throat> and take the nut and you're gonna spin this on and get it as tight as you can. It's going to come loose on you, especially when you start shaping it around the, the bolt head, and you'll have to adjust it a little bit throughout. You'll notice I still have my glove on. That's way I, when I'm handling this, I'm not gonna cut my hand up with, with the edge of those. They're still pretty sharp. All right, now we've got it somewhat tight. Um, after we shape each one of these layers, you can stagger and shift each each layer so that it, it looks more appealing to the eye. And remember, nature is random. You don't have to make this all exact or perfect in line with each other because that's not the way mother nature works, so why should you? This first layer, this first petal especially, we're gonna wrap as tight as we can around itself. And there's no like, oh, you need to do one, two, like in some pattern, it's just, Whatever looks right to your eye is the one we're gonna go with. I'm gonna bend this one up. So I'm bending it up as close and tight to that bolt, and that's why we cut as close to that hole as we can, so that these can bend in as close to that, that bolt head as possible. Now, with putting pressure this way, I am going to squeeze that pedal and slowly shift the pliers around that pedal. And you can see it's starting to curl just a little bit here. And I want this to kind of fold in around itself. Now, 
once you've got it wrapped around itself and every pedal after, you need to take and add little flares to the outside of your pedals. That's what makes it look real versus like sheet metal folded up. You can really see the difference on this one is because I've got some folded edges and some not folded edges and it's obvious to tell the, the pedals that are, aren't shaped, they look like sheet metal. But everything else that has those lifelike bends in them, those look real. And especially when you hit it with paint, these really come to life and look real. So I like to take the edge of my pliers and pinch and just kind of roll with my wrist outward. And a little bit goes a long way. You want to be careful here because whatever you're doing to the top is also being shown up on the bottom. So you don't want to scar it too bad. We're just going to open this up just a little bit more. There we go. And close it up some. All right, now next one, I'm going to pick this guy here. Fold it up. And again, I'm going to be pushing inward the same time that I try to squeeze this around the last pedal. If I don't shift where I'm pinching around this, I'm going to end up folding it into a crease instead of a round shape. And again, after each pedal, we want to shape that. Sometimes, like I just did, I pull that pedal outward so I can get the pliers in there. I'm going to add a little bit of a some flare to this guy, then I'll push it back in. Now, the reason we do the little flares after every pedal is because once this thing's all put together, if we were to try to add the flares after you've tightened this thing all up, it's, it becomes really hard to get in there with the pliers. So that's why we do it after every one. All right, now we're just gonna continue on down each layer and eventually this will open up. After each pedal's wrapped, you gotta add a little bit of a flare to it. This part's really important. If you want it to look lifelike, you've gotta add little flares to these pedals. Otherwise, it just looks like metal. You can see it's already starting to take shape. And I'm gonna do this one here. You see, I, I press without alternating and it kind of added a crease to that. So to fix it, just bring it out, kind of squeeze it some more flatten it back all right I think I'm gonna switch this over to a time lapse so you don't have to watch me shape all these one by one All right, I've got it all shaped up. Not sure what all you'll be able to see in the time lapse, but every now and then I had to shift this just so that it looked right to the eye. 
And that's why we have just five pedals on there is because then it keeps it all random with an odd number. If we have them all even numbers, a six or a four, then it ends up looking more like a pine cone versus a rose. Next step is make sure that this nut is as tight as you can get it. And then we're gonna cut this off right at the base of that, that bolt. So we're gonna use our hacksaw to do this. We're gonna clamp this in the vise with the rose head off to the left hand side. And we're going to make sure we got that as close to that nut head as we can. We want to make sure you cut as close to that nut as we can. That's where we're going to tack our stem onto. And that's our next step. All right, we've got our barbed wire. <clears throat> I keep my barbed wire in the office, but you're just going to by eye kind of whatever looks best to your eye, how long the stem needs to be for your rows. I'm going to get it with two barbs in there. So I'll probably cut it around here. And just our regular Welper pliers should cut this. All right, I think that looks right. All right, now we're ready to weld these together. It's just gonna be done with small little tacks. We're not gonna do anything crazy on it. It's thin metal, it doesn't need it. Um, this is galvanized coated, but we're not welding on this. We're welding on this nut, and that doesn't have any sort of coating on it that's toxic. We don't ever wanna weld on galvanized coating. Since this is steel and it's gonna ground for us, what we're gonna do is just have that rose sit down flat or well just set on its face and we're going to tack this barbed wire to that nut and we're gonna just by holding it in place like this and come in and just put some small tacks right here all right now we're gonna weld it Now it's real important, while it's still kind of grounded to the table, we're gonna tack the top part of your stem. If you don't tack these two pieces together, over time this could just unravel or end up stabbing somebody with those sharp pieces, so we're, we've gotta tack those together. All right, this barbed wire does have a little bit of a galvanized coating on it, but I think since we're just doing small little stuff, as long as you're not breathing in the little ghost floaties, we should be all right. Now that is a rose, it's completed. Um, aside from paint, this is done. We can paint it uh, whatever color your heart desires, or if you would like, you can leave it just raw iron colored. It's up to you. I'll show what these look like painted just so you can get an idea. I'll put some examples from the past in there. But that's the rose. Pretty easy, pretty fun little project. Really cheap to do as well. I think usually I only charge like $1.50 for, for a rose to make. Um, a lot of my students will sell these for $25, $30 bucks, or if they do a like a bouquet, a dozen roses, they'll sell them for 75 bucks or something like that. A lot of people like these for weddings. Pretty good little project.